Hey guys, Gus here, and today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial on how to paint white. Now, white is a colour that um, I've certainly had problems with in the past, and I know that a lot of you guys do as well. So, as usual, I'm going to go through some of the basic principles of um, painting this particular colour, and then I'm going to go through a bit of a demonstration at the end. So, the first thing to establish is generally you've got three kinds of white. You're going to have um, a cool range, a sort of neutral range, and then a warm range. Now, any one of these can be taken to uh, various tones either side, and you can mix these with your white paint to make the base coat before highlighting up to white or what you can do is you can paint pure white and then you can make glazes and glaze down into the shadows with these colors. Um, a quick example actually of a cool white that I did very recently on the fine cast model Isabella von Karstein. Um, if, you have a, if you have a look at the um, the tassels at the back of the miniature you can see that there is a slight let me just zoom in a slight blue tinge so this would be an example of a cool white as opposed to her hair which would be a warm white um, and then the inside of her dress which is kind of a pink with white would be an example of a warm white because it's in the red spectrum okay so the other very important thing to understand with white is texture now getting a nice smooth base coat down um, can be quite difficult especially with brushwork um, the ideal thing that you want to do um, if you want to get a smooth coat as in pick your pick your your uh, your cold or your neutral or your warm white is you want to get these base coats down first and then go up to white if you want to go the other way paint white first and then go down glaze down with whatever color you want um, it's a lot more difficult to get a nice smooth coat of white texture is very very important with white white tends to pick up um, very very subtle shadows and tends to pick up glazes and other colors very easily so the best tool to use if you want to lay, lay down a white base coat as opposed to starting off with one of the other colors and working up to white um, is ye old airbrush these things are great for getting down a very smooth coat of paint very easily very quickly um, and it, 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 yeah, it, it's just extremely easy to do and it will give you a nice smooth white base coat from which you can glaze down to. So those are the very basic principles of white. Now these three colors in front of you, you can substitute with just about anything as long as you do not go too extreme. What I mean by that is with white, you do not want to go down to black in my experience and in my opinion you want to go down to a fairly light color. So for example, um, I don't know, if you wanted to go down with something like purple, this purple would be too dark. So you could, you could glaze down ever so slightly to get a purple tinge as opposed to going all the way down to the flat purple color. So I'm going to demonstrate um, both methods today, uh, one of which is the um, is the spraying white glazing down the other method is um, laying down a color and then going up to white now the one thing I did forget to mention is that when you are spraying white onto a miniature uh, say for example with an airbrush you can also then use things like washes uh, to, to, to bring down the color of course washes are not as accurate um, but they're quicker if you want to paint things for gaming standards like like uh, wraiths and banshees and you know all that kind of stuff so it's a lot quicker to do so I'm going to crack on with the, the quick tutorial of the two kinds 
white base coat glazing down and um, a neutral cool or warm color glazing up to white okay guys so we're going to start off the um, tutorial then with just base coating the actual subject of the miniature with cerebite green and this is just to emphasize the nice smooth base coat you need even with a brush so using paint that's sort of medium consistency a little bit thinner maybe um, and making sure that you're layering down that base coat really nicely and really smoothly if you have to do a couple of coats then so be it um, now I'm going to move on to the cerebite green which you'll notice is, is quite a bit lighter and when you're doing your base coats try not to do um, completely black do a sort of neutral neutral color so neutral blue neutral green or purple or what have you and this is because when you go all the way up to white um, those colors will then look a lot darker so you don't need to use pure black so with the cerebite green then as usual with glazes just putting one drop of medium to one uh, paintbrush load of actual paint um, and all I'm doing is I'm highlighting the extreme sort of edges where the cloth drapes over the arms of the subject um, and then dragging the paint down towards where the fabric actually starts to flatten out on the actual miniature um, and you'll see I'm a lot more liberal when it comes to the paint towards the towards the centers where the, the fabric would naturally catch the light and as always I normally try and do about um, three coats of glaze with each step uh, and you'll find that when you get practiced with this method that you can get out one sort of character figure at display standard per week going at a very casual pace you know just like an hour a night kind of thing once you get used to it so again picking out those details uh, as as we're in the in the sort of folds of the cloth uh, the, the very very sharp details right at the top and at the bottom as well and then dragging that paint out um, towards the middle and towards the bottom of the cloth now the interesting thing with glazing is as the, the paint is starting to thicken and dry on your brush that's when you can really use it to start picking out those highlights um, so it's quite interesting that when you start doing the first couple of glazes the glaze is obviously very very of very smooth consistency and as you're using the same brush it thickens up on the brush so you can start applying thicker highlights and uh, sort of sharper highlights to the areas that it needs to go to so same again on the left side obviously for this example I'm only going to do the sort of fronts and sides of these uh, of the pieces of fabric and the same thing applies again um, and again like I always say with glazing it's very very important to use quality brushes um, I use the, the ProArt uh, Renaissance Sable brushes I find them just as good as Series 7 and I really like the long bristles again with glazing uh, you tend to get a sort of uh, surface tension within the bristles that, that pulls the paint up into the ferrule and if you've got short bristles it can mess your brush up so these are actually riggers brushes so they've got you know longer bristles and I'll, that's just my personal preference I prefer that but I find a bit of glazing and again you want to be bringing that color up um, onto the prominent points on top of the uh, on top of the arms where the fabric drapes over the arms so now I'm just going to go for a 50-50 mix of uh, skull white and cerebite green one more drop of medium just to thin it down again um, and then we're just going to keep on working on those highlights so same thing again uh, I normally try and clean my brush in between each each glaze uh, and you saw I do, do a little uh, sort of skin test there and that's just to make sure the paint is thin enough and you know you generally find if it's thin enough if it sinks into the creases of your actual skin then you know that it's thin enough um, so nice thin glaze and again so now we're really going to emphasize those prominent points and and where the fabric sort of flattens out where it drapes over the top of the arms that's when you want to start picking out those areas as well um, as well as sort of uh, the the prominent folds just below that and then flattening out towards towards the middle of the uh, the fabric where it will catch the light and the same applies for the um, for the bottom of the uh, of the actual fabric where it curves inwards so any sort of prominent areas where with a, a sort of a silky or light fabric would catch the light naturally that's when you need to sort of flatten out the bristles and drag uh, more paint onto those areas and the same thing will apply with this with this um, stage of the glaze as well I normally do about three coats just to sort of build up the transition to make sure it's nice and smooth and to give it nice sort of depth and texture to the cloth as well as being smooth 
and at this stage we can really start to um, emphasize the highlights so the very sort of ends of the fabric where it drapes over the arms of the subject um, those very very sharp creases now we can start to really emphasize those and this is going back to my previous point of going for a neutral base coat because as you can see when you really start to emphasize those points because we're going up to pure white um, it looks a lot darker than when you naturally put it down on the actual miniature right so that's why you want to go for a sort of neutral color again if you go for black it's gonna it's gonna be a lot harder to go all the way up to white you know what I mean it's gonna just take a lot more effort and it's gonna chalk up and you're gonna have all sorts of problems so neutral base coat and uh, and I prefer this method so I'm just gonna do the same again on the uh, on the left arm um, and also picking out those 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 prominent folds that are folding underneath the arm, the arm as well as well as the bottommost edge of the fabric now and all of the sharp edges on the outside um, and again where the fabric curves so we just we just sort of consolidating the highlights so to speak you know bringing them in sharper and closer and more so but the trick with white is is to go a bit heavier so instead of just really picking out the points finely you want to you want to splash a bit more of that glaze on there to really give it sort of a white saturation because of course that's what you're doing right we're, we're painting white okay and as you can see now um, I've gone up to pure white um, when I use the pure white instead of using one drop of medium I'll normally use two drops just because it's 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 naturally it's the the lightest color you're gonna get it's the strongest color you're gonna get so I need to make sure it's nice and thin because the last thing you want to do at this stage is have the white too thick so I always try and put two drops of medium instead of one per one brush load of paint um, and again you know cleaning cleaning brushes in between uh, in between the actual um, glaze glaze layers okay so on to the next thing then which is the uh, the banshee all I've done is I've base coated it sort of a bone color so far and now I'm just going to go go in with the snow white which is a minute of paint um, straight into the airbrush and I'm just going to spread over the entirety of the action model making sure that you you're spraying in thin coats uh, multiple thin coats to get a nice smooth texture for when we later on apply a glaze sorry or, or a wash to the miniature so as usual I'm just using a um, Patriot 105 airbrush making sure everything's nice and clean and always remember guys uh, with aerosolized paints safety 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 so either wear a mask a respirator or um, have some sort of extractor fan when you're doing this um, and gloves if you if you so desire so like I said nice smooth base coat to go on nice thin layers of, uh, of paint to make sure that the uh, the wash goes on nice and smooth so here we're using a, um, a wash of Beale Time Green, which I actually had to thin down inside the pot quite a uh, quite a considerable amount more with Lamia Medium, just because I'm putting it straight onto white. It was a bit too thick out of the pot as it was. Um, and as you can see, I'm just using a larger brush, a size four, size three, four brush, and literally just whacking it on there. That's all you need to do, um, and let it sink into recesses. Don't be too specific worry about being specific after you've applied the wash and then you can go in and start just dabbing away any bits of wash that have pulled too much in any of the recesses um, just to take sort of some of the uh, the darkness away as you can see quick finished drying example okay so there we have it um, two very quick examples of um, how to paint white on the left you can see uh, the um, vampire proxy is actually a dark elf miniature I'm using um, and the way that I, I painted the white. Now obviously on both of them I've done you know a green uh, and that's just for this example. You can substitute that with any color you want. Again the main thing is getting um, the transitions nice and smooth and the texture nice and smooth all the way down to white and of course the uh, the, the Lamium medium helps a lot uh, with glazing. You can check out my you can check out my previous videos on uh, on how to do glazing uh, to get that technique right. So that's the first example using a brush, um, and then of course the the second example um, is using an airbrush just to get down a nice base coat and then doing a wash. Now once this wash is dry, you could then go back and simply use uh, an airbrush again and use white and just spray it from above. To, to to catch all of the all of the prominent points so uh, very very simple techniques to do 
uh, with, with regards to the airbrush and very effective for things like this. Um, you can use both techniques of course on one miniature if you want by using things like masking and what have you but I, um, I always prefer brushwork, I think it gives a miniature more depth I think it gives a better texture and more character but that's just my personal opinion um, and the, a quick sort of colour list that I uh, used on both, I used the cave light green as a base um, for the dark elf slash vampire uh, I then worked up to cerebite green and then eventually up to skull white um, quick side note, these two colours are great, unique green colours, you can't get them in any other range, so really, really good colours. Uh, and then on the uh, airbrush side of things, I used Minotaur Skull White, followed by Snow White, and then a wash of Bealtan Green. With the washes straight over white, I would highly recommend you thin the washes down. I had to use a lot of Lamia Medium inside this pot to get it nice and thin. So. That has been a very, very quick tutorial on two different kinds of how to paint white. I hope this helps. I hope that you've gotten something out of it. Uh, and please like, subscribe, and post comments below. Share with us your techniques and your ways of doing things. Thanks, guys. Take care.